Hey guys, Ryan here. I just want to take a moment and talk about cam and crank sensor diagnostics. I occasionally get questions from people on how do I tell if my cam or crank sensor went bad. Uh, you'll have a drag strip pass or the car will stall or something will happen and the first question is typically was it a cam or crank sensor issue? How do I tell? And we've, we have stuff in the software that will help you determine that very quickly and my goal here is to walk you through all of that today and show you how it works. The first step is setting things up and what we're going to do is I'm just going to add it into the data monitor. We're just going to go here, hit E, I'm going to hit Diags. For cam and crank we're going to pull RPM over so you can see what I'm doing. My test setup here is I just have an ECU at my desk powered up with a RPM generator from MSD on it. So we've got cam and crank sensor going in, cam and crank sensor going into the ECU to simulate it, and I'm just going to unplug them and show you what happens. So the next thing we need is diag one, diag six, and diag seven, and also diag thirteen, which I'll show you what that is as well. So what these are is they relate to just different things in the background. They are also part of the help file. So what we'll do as well is we'll go help contents. I'm going to pull this over to the proper screen. There we go. So in our help file, and this has been in there for a few years now, if I believe it's, it's in V5 for sure, and I believe I also put it in the later V4 versions. You'll go over to Diagnostics and Statuses, and you'll see that we have a cam and crank sensor diagnostics, which is what we're going over today, and it explains everything I'm showing you in the, in the help. So if you're ever at the track and forget, you can always go here and just double check. It also has some system log diagnostics as well, but that's for another video another day. But you'll see that we have Type 1. Yep. This is where it sets it up, da-da-da-da-da. Basically, if you go under your basic I.O. under the system ICF, and I'll show you in a minute, there's the diagnostic type. Type 1 is 0. So if you look here, diag type number 1, 100000. So for cam and crank, just know it should read that. That's just a quick sanity check. Make sure that your tune's set that way before you go looking through your log expecting 6 and 7 to work. And when you scroll down, you can see we cover what all of them mean. The majority of them don't have a lot of meaning to the person that's just trying to get their engine running right. A lot of it's more engineering type information, but Diag 6 and Diag 7 are your big ones, or your cam and crank sensor diagnostics. So Diag 6 is it's a crank error counter, but typically the way it presents in the field, and I'll show here in a few moments, is that it shows when a cam sensor fails. Diag 7 typically shows when a crank sensor fails. So you can go here and look at it, and then I don't have... The other thing that's nice is your Diag 10, 11, and 12 will tell you what your cam and crank sensor setup is. Uh, it's important to note that Diag 10 shows the system type. So what that means is it's showing this right here. So that's Diag 10. Now, 11 and 12 tell you what your cam and crank sensor are set up as, but they're only valid, and the only time you ever want to look at 11 and 12 is if number 10 is set to custom, which is 9. So if Diag 10 is 9, you can look at 11 and 12. If it's not 9, don't look at them. They don't mean anything. And then Diag 13 isn't in here, but I'll show you what that is in a few moments. That's something we added a little later and didn't find its way into the instructions yet. All right, so we're back on our screen. We're going to go back online. RPM's at 868. Our diag number one is at 1 million, which is what we talked about. It's in the instructions. As long as this digit right here is a zero, your cam and crank will work. You'll see diag six and diag seven are at one. They're not incrementing. That's what you want. It doesn't really matter what the number is when you go and look at a log. And I'll, I'll, do a log at the end of this and post it up and show you what it looks like as well. But Diag 6 and 7 are sitting there. They're doing nothing. We can slowly increase the RPM. And you can see they do nothing. Now you can do it real quick. 
and you can see we had a quick flash on diag 6, which means there was an error. So what's diag 6? Well, if we unplug our cam sensor, you can see diag 6 goes crazy and RPM goes to sync error. And that's another key you're having cam crank issues. If your RPM shows sync error, uh, that's typically a very good indication that you've had a camera crank sensor issue and you can follow it up by confirming with Diag 6 and 7. So, recap. We unplug the cam sensor, Diag 6 starts counting up. Plug it back in, it stops counting. What it does is it counts each time there is an error detected. So what you're looking for in a log is a change in this number or even Diag 7. Diag 7 is the opposite. What it does is it counts if you had too many, so it goes stall. You can't really show it on the bench because that's what happens. It kind of counts up and yeah, now we're in trouble. You're basically in a stall condition and you gotta reset. So as you can see, even when RPM goes off, they don't reset, they just sit at the same number. And that, that's because it requires a key cycle to reset the counters. So if we key cycle off, back on, go back online, we'll see there's zero again. And I can feed it some RPM. And you can see as it comes up, it does you know three and one right there. That's really normal. That's like you'll always see in your logs that they're usually a small single digit number. And it's just because when you're starting the car, they're not synced up and it's got to figure it out and it's going to count an error or two while it's doing that. So I'm going to pop over real quick here, uh, stop recording for a second, and then get a log set up so I can show you how it looks in the log. All right, so I just did a log where I brought the engine RPM up, unplugged the cam sensor, plugged it back in, and then I brought it up into the rev limiter and back down. And now I'm going to go ahead and set up a screen for that and show you the same thing we showed in the data monitor, just in a log now. So once again, we'll set up a diag. We'll add... So you got to find them in there. Yep, there they are. Diag 1, diag 6, diag 7. And then one other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the main rev limit. All right, so there we go. You can see real quickly what happened here if you, if you know what you're looking at. So I'm going to go ahead and turn each thing off one at a time, and we're going to look just at RPM now. So we can see I brought my RPM way, way up. Yep, all the way up to 10.7. Even higher, 10.8. All right, so we're just going to go 11,000 here so we can see the whole thing. There we go. All right, so we see I brought RPM up to start the log, and right here something happened, and then it came up, and on the way down I had a couple quick blips as well of RPM doing something funny. So typically what I see in logs when people send them is something like this where you have this quick blip. So what we'll do is we'll look at diag 1. We always just got to look at real quick, make sure that it is indeed one one million, I think that number is. Zero, this is a zero is what matters. Then we look at Diag 6, and we'll click it, and we see, oh wow, there was a flat number here, four. Over here, it's 101. Then in between, where this was happening, it was counting up. That's really all you need to do in a log, is you just go, oh, I think I had a cam and crank sensor issue. I'll pull up Diag 6 and 7. I'll just click at the beginning of the log, before I think I had the issue, and I'll look at the numbers. And then you just click at the very end of the log. And if it's the same number, which it's not in this case, but if it were the same number, you'd have no issue. So if this were the start of the log and this were the end, all I'd have to do is exactly that. And I could go, oh, it's four and one in both spots. I've had no cam and crank sensor issues. But if I go here, I go, oh, crap. I had an issue, and I'd turn, you know. So the way I'd normally do it is I'd look at it like this. I'd just go here, here, and I'd go, oh, crap. That number counted way up. Let me turn it on and see where the issue is. And you can see here, we had our giant issue. We'll zoom in and you can look at it. I'll we'll click, yep, sync, 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 error, error, sync, 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 error. And the whole time it's counting. 
And the great thing about using Diag 6 and 7 is sometimes depending on how fast your logging is, is this is especially true on Terminator X, where this does work on Terminator X as well. On Terminator X, your logging speed is slow enough that you may not see the sync error show up in the log, but you will, because this counts, you will always, always, always see Diag 6 and 7 in the log. So right here you could go, damn, I've got a missing cam sensor signal. And we'll scroll over here and we'll look at actually what it did here. So it did as well here. So yeah, we had a couple little blips where I basically, what happened is I dropped the engine RPM too fast with the signal generator that it wigged out the ECU and it couldn't track it. So it threw an error. So it did its job. Now the, so that's, so that's basically Diag 6 and 7, cam and crank sensor diagnostics. Diag 7 is the exact same thing, but it has to do with if you have a missing crank sensor signal, it will show here. So the way both of these works is they, they count cam and crank sensors in relation to each other. Yeah, this is a 4X, 1X. It's just your typical crank trigger with a single cam position sensor. And what it does is it counts eight crank pulses and looks for one cam pulse. If it gets nine crank pulses, it throws an error on Diag 6. The opposite's also true. If you had, instead of the eight you're supposed to have, if you had seven, it would throw Diag 7. Because it would say, hey, I got a cam sensor pulse before I should have. There, there weren't enough crank pulses. And that's how you use it. So basically it's telling you, oh, my crank sensor probably skipped out is the most likely scenario. Now the last thing I wanted to show you was this Diag 13 I referenced earlier. Diag 13 is a rev limit counter, but it only works with spark high only. So when I say it only works with spark high only, what I mean by that is it will only show the rev limit if you're using spark high only. Now it doesn't matter if it's rev limit one, main rev limit, all that matters is when whatever rev limit was active was spark high only, it will count. And what it counts is how many cylinders it dropped. Uh, total, just incrementing. If it dropped one cylinder, then another one, it would say two. If it dropped two more cylinders, it would say four. So when we go back to the log, you'll see right here, here's my main rev limit. And you can see that Diag 13, because I was on Spark High only, instantly started climbing up and it stopped as soon as the main rev limit stopped as well. So you can see that it was at our logging speed, we were getting roughly six to seven cylinders dropped each frame. Now, this is a function of engine speed and logging speed about how fast this goes up. So the this shape of this curve doesn't really mean anything. What you're looking for is, hey, why did my closed loop shut off? Did my trans brake button activate and I didn't see it? This would show that. You know, occasionally in a log you'll see Everything's going great, and the engine will have a quick blip, and it'll show open loop for about three seconds, five seconds sometimes, sometimes half a second, depends on a whole bunch of stuff. I think most of the time it's actually half a second. But you'll wonder why that happened. And typically that's just because the trans brake button activated super, super quick and turned down the two-step. Uh, typically the buttons are getting wore out and vibrating, or if it's on the steering wheel, perhaps the driver touched it, which they'll never admit, but it happens. Uh, but if you don't see that line because it happened so quick in the data log, you know, this will sometimes not show up if you're not logging at 300 frames per second. You can still look and see, oh, well, this incremented by three or four, so I know a rev limit got activated. It was probably that. Really, that's all I've got to share today. So if you have any questions, please let me know. I'm happy to answer them. Otherwise, have a wonderful day.